right. Um, so uh, we will begin with uh, the obligatory preamble uh, that is still required. Uh, and Dan, if you'd be willing, happy to uh, to read that. All Pursuit. right, great. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Norton Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the end of this agenda. Members of the public in this public hearing slash meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion <coughs> of the hearing designated for comment by raising their hand virtually or pressing star nine if participating by phone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Norton Cable website, www.nortonmediacenter.org, an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you, Dan. So uh, in tonight's meeting, we have our director, John Thomas. Uh, we have Megan Harrop somewhere in this list um and um who is our assistant um administrative assistant uh i am julian kadish vice chair we have lisa carosa um uh, i am chair lisa carosa is vice chair and we also have ron o'reilly uh, dan pearson mark fernandez um carrie schneider and i think the only member not able to attend tonight is tama best um, so we have a request that um, uh, 56 Leonard Street, uh, file number DEP uh, 250 um be heard initially because Mark uh, Mariano, who is presenting it, has a conflict and needs to go to another meeting. So um, I, I think we have to technically uh, have a motion to that effect and vote on it. Um, so if someone would, uh, unless there's great disagreement, if someone would make such a motion, we can entertain it. So moved. Uh, motion made by Dan and seconded by? Second. Uh, I, well, I don't know. I think Ron seconded it. So again, roll call vote starting with uh, uh, Lisa and Ron. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Mark? Aye. Aye. And Dan? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So, uh, uh, Mark, uh, you're up. The file number, again, is 250-1111, concerns 56 Leonard Street, which concerns um, a project to um, a place, a family, single-family dwelling. Uh, along with appropriate landscaping and utilities. So we've heard this previously, and why don't you uh, uh, present uh, what the changes might have been. Sure. Uh, this, this is Mark Mariano with Oak Hill Engineering, 75 Oak Hill Ave. And tonight I'm representing uh, Ruhan General Contracting for a single family home at 56 Leonard Street. Um, thank you for the commission for allowing me to go first um, with the back-to-back the -back meetings that I have. So let's uh, go through the items that we uh, addressed based on comments from last meeting. Uh, first was uh, one comment was to bring um, uh, the erosion control and the uh, the sign out of the little out curve of 100 foot uh, of the flood zone right here. So we, we addressed that. Uh, secondly was a concern with the amount of, of velocity of water coming off this hill. 
So what we did is we tiered it. We provided um, three individual tiers. So there'll be a, a boulder wall and the boulder walls are about be about two feet tall. So they'll be inset into the embankment, then filled out um, about 20 feet and then another uh, another two foot drop and then set out about 20 feet. And this will this will hopefully slow the velocity down. Uh, remind you that this is a former gravel uh, pit, so there there is very good draining material here. Um, the remaining water we uh, addressed by adding check dams along the gravel uh, drainage strip. We also added a small little 18 by 18 uh, NDS drain, which um, we have draining to the uh, rain garden. Um, and we added an additional rain garden in this area, and that will um, allow the accumulation and filtration of some of the water here. So the main the main concern that the commission had was uh, runoff onto uh, Leonard Street, and um, we've we've addressed that even in the driveway right here. We've we've shown that we want the driveway to pitch down in in a way so we're not carrying all the runoff from the road it's going to the drain or going into um, a, some sort of management system um, and we provided a nice little planting plan here for the rain garden um, and we provided a uh, section cut so we're, we're we actually have a little little uh, storm drainage system that we're going to put in underneath it so that will actually help with uh, the infiltration as well. So are these plans reviewed by the highway department or the building, oh, I assume the building inspector, but I'm assuming they, I mean, this issue of shedding onto the road is really not directly conservation, but I, I see you coming into issues with, with the highway department or building uh, if you didn't address that. So. Yep. Um, so, uh, anyone have any, uh, questions, comments, uh, from the commission? And, uh, anyone in the audience, uh, on this project, uh, have any questions or comments? Uh, and again, to do that, you can go to the, uh, let's see, yeah, the reactions button. Uh, to either raise your hands or hand or for that matter, uh, just take your mic off mute and ask your question, but you have to identify yourself. So seeing no hands, so I, I have to ask to John, uh, it seems we have all of the information we need to, to close. Is that your, your sense or? I mean, it's, it's my understanding the applicant has um, pursued alternatives for, you know, alleviating any sort of potential water from going off site. Um, they have, you know, shown some BMPs that are within our, you know, some of the recommended BMP guidance documentation. So I think, you know, that this, it's, it's my best, you know, opinion that for instance, this, this project would be okay for, for attenuating any sort of runoff potential for the site. So that sounds like, yes, we're fine to close. Yes. And we have all the, the uh, notifications and everything, so we can definitely close. All right. So uh, any further comments or questions? If not, we can consider, consider a motion to um, close uh, the hearing for file number 250-1111. So moved. Uh, that sounded like Carrie for the. Was that? Oh, that was Lisa for the, for the motion and Mark for the second. It was Carrie and Ron, I think. <laughs> All right, Carrie and Mark. Yep. Yeah, it was me. Me for the motion. Carrie and Mark, we got it. All right, so uh, Megan, you got that right. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have a motion to close, um, and again, uh, we have to do a roll call vote, uh, starting with Lisa and Ron. Aye. 
and we'll do a, a Carrie and Mark. Aye. Aye. Looks like Dan says aye, and Ron, you said aye, yes? Aye. Yes, aye. Yep, sorry. Oh, yeah. And I'll throw in an aye, so the, the uh, motion carries. Um, uh, so, uh, as uh, Mark, as you know, uh, 21 days, within 21 days, we will issue a certificate, uh, uh, an order of conditions. Yep, thank you. You bet, thank you. Good thank evening. you. All right, so we're back to our regular agenda order, and our first uh, hearing for that is file number 250-1114. It's a notice of intent for 306-308 East Main Street, uh, otherwise known as the Bernie and Phil's warehouse, um, concerning uh, an addition to the existing warehouse. So do we have a um, representative for the applicant? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. This is Mark Arnold with Goddard Consulting, the Wetlands Consultant, on behalf of Nor Ruben Norton LLC, um, doing business as Bernie and Phil's at 306 to 308 East Main Street. Along with me, I have Deshang Wang from C Creative Land and Water Engineering LLC, who's the design engineer. Rick Mann is on the call as well, who's uh, counsel for the applicant, just helping with logistics. Uh, and I think there may be others from the team here as well. Um, but I'm not seeing the names pop up quickly. So uh, I'm going to just introduce the project, explain the existing conditions, and um, and then uh, go from there. So the um, current pro uh, property is an existing warehouse and parking lot um, property. There's a um, this plan shows the new, uh, eastern portion of the property along East Main Street here on your right. Uh, this is the uh, east side of the building um, warehouse area. You can see here in the center of the plan, the existing parking lot ends with some drainage systems, and then you end up going to an area that's wooded. And then in the eastern side center, there is an existing stormwater basin that infiltrates water off the roofs from this portion of the building. There's a BBW that's delineated here uh, along the uh, west side of the property, it wraps around, does a few other things in there, but this is the area that's relevant to the proposed work. And then I've highlighted the 25 here and the 50 foot buffer, uh, the 100 foot buffer zone right here. Um, so right now the existing stormwater in this area um, either has direct discharges or goes off this roof into this infiltration basin uh, and there's a small overflow over here to this rip wrap here just along the edge of the buffer zone so those are the existing conditions on the property again this is a, a wooded area the back area there's some areas that are open um, area here and then there's town property in the rear the proposed activities on the property are a addition that's 200 by 247 uh, feet um, only a small portion of that is in the buffer zone highlighted in this gray area right here along with a, a gravel access road around the addition. Um, some grading work a portion of the basin is in the buffer zone. No work is proposed within 35 feet of the wetlands. Uh, this is an infiltration basin that is similar to what's existing there. It's an existing uh, infiltration basin. Basically we have sand here with um, high groundwater, but we do have sand that um, does perk very well out here. Uh, creative land management has done some extensive soil testing um, to confirm uh, depth of depth of high groundwater and also determine about mounding to ensure that we don't have any mounding um, problems. And so they submitted a whole mounding analysis in their um, report uh, on the stormwater design here. There is there is an emergency drain um, that's in, proposed just in case there was something with the basin having an issue with draining um, that could be used to just help um, figure out what's going on with the basin here. There's an emergency spillway. And um, that's basically it. We did submit a table basically in the buffer zone. The building has 2,865 square feet. Gravel road has 3,185 square feet. Stormwater basin is 2,035 square feet. Emergency dewatering outlets around 240 square feet. You have some site grading around 75, uh, 100 square feet. Total work area in the buffer zone is about 15,865 square feet. Uh, we did submit a stormwater permit as we're disturbing more than one acre. And we did submit um, a SWIP for that as well. Um, as I noted earlier, the soils on the site are very sandy. Um, and so we did, um, but we did provide a SWIP as required uh, and do have a NIPTES permit that we have um, had issued. Um, so that has been lined up. 
So that's the project um, in a in a quick nutshell. Uh, again, um, Deshang Wang was brought on by Creative Land Management to address a lot of the concerns that were previously raised uh, on this project that was previously filed under a different notice of intent um, for stormwater. Um, and he's addressed all the different issues, particularly with groundwater mounding, um, soil testing, um, including uh, more intensive uh, existing survey to determine topography, determine the pre-existing runoff rates, which were reduced and therefore um, the basin had to be enlarged and, and, and created to ensure that we had enough uh, management volume. And um, he can go into further details if uh, the commission wants me to, but um, that's the, the general presentation and I'm glad to take questions. Um, I, I just have a question on your overall plan, uh, and it, it, it may not be relevant, but I was just curious, uh, on the plan labeled existing building 306, 308, it's the stormwater operation and maintenance, uh, location plan, um, to the west of the proposed building, you have a stone embankment, um, illustrated um, in, in, in just directly to the west uh, of the building, your, your proposed building. Yeah, so if you just go to your this, left, this, this is, is that, that's existing? It is, yeah. It's basically a steeper slope. Um, it's mostly, it's vegetated. There's a lot of poison ivy, um, and there's some shrubs and small trees growing in it. But it was basically a, a riprap slope that was built that's solely kind of vegetated. It's um, probably a two to one slope. All right. It's existing. It, it is and existing. It's existing. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, I guess, John, you can start with any comments or questions you might have. Yeah, I, I guess I guess up front, we should probably state that the peer review consultant wasn't able to give us a response back for this project. Um, they've been very busy, so um, we're still waiting to hear back from them on that. Um, and that's that's really I mean, I looked at this, the wetland resource areas. I checked every flag. I didn't want to move any of the flags that were out there. I thought they were delineated really well. Um, but besides that, I think we're really we're really waiting on the uh, stormwater component of this from the peer review consultant to give us a little additional information. All right. Uh, any uh, comments or questions from members of the commission? Um, I just I just have a couple. Um, <clears throat> so the the new access is going to be a, is going to be paved or unpaved? unpaved it's going to be gravel it's just a it's just an access road to access the building for um for fire and the basin itself okay and so it sounds like currently there's really no treatment um for water quality before it enters the detention basin so i guess in in could you give me a summary of what you're proposing in terms of uh treating water quality and using deep sump so you were using a vortex unit uh, for tech unit can you just go over some of the water quality improvements please sure uh, so the the, the proposed all the proposed stormwater all the proposed impervious surfaces are rubber roof so all that rubber roof goes directly into gutters which goes directly into the infiltration basin so we have no suspended solids of any type that would be getting into the system because it's coming off a rubber roof into um these structures and these structures will have some a little bit of a sump in them um, but as you, uh, as to, it's an atypical project because you don't have um, impervious surfaces. We're actually removing pavement um, for a portion of the building here um, as part of the project, but the water quality treatment isn't really um, necessary because of the rubber roof. We're not doing asphalt shingles, which might get some granular um, off there. And so because of that, that's why we don't have any type of storm scepters or anything else. So where does the parking lot drain? The existing parking lot uh it has multiple catch basins there's multiple catch basins in the the parking lot they they have direct discharges um that go to the slope right here and then there's other there's, there's other basins on the on the uh, east the west side of the property that ha go into actual stormwater basins um so if i go to this plant here you there's can no see treatment right, there's no treatment right now currently from that uh, I mean, I there, guess there, there he is. I think Mark maybe I can, I can uh, do a quick uh, 
the existing condition was kind of requested uh, from uh, uh, John at our meeting is to to be for the long term maintenance purpose. So they are treated by uh, deep sump catch basins in the storm septers. So quite a few storm septers. If you're looking at the bottom, okay. we listed all the treatment. Uh, uh, how many catch basins? How many? Uh, so there's only small portion of the parking goes to that uh, embankment riprap area, but it's treated with the storm scepter to 80% PSS removal. Uh, the okay. rest of it go into the first uh, infiltration basin, and I check in the field. There's no uh, outflow at all. So it means all the water coming from the parking go through deep sump catch basin and the storm scepter, and then basically 100% infiltrated into the ground. And uh, so therefore, uh, it's it's meet all the stormwater management requirement. For this filing, it's the uh, infiltration basin number two, which is only take clean loop runoff, which is considered uh, clean water, as Mark just said, is a, uh, automatically assume 80% uh, uh, right. clean water and again all the water going in the infiltration basin will handle up to 100 years storm volume which is no overflow at all so so from that perspective if it's really going to the uh, crunching the numbers technically is 100 percent removal because there's no overflow at all so, so. okay thank you very much Deshang. you're welcome Uh, any further questions from the commission? And uh, any questions from members of the audience? Seeing none, um, <clears throat> so we, we need the uh, information that the peer reviewer will provide. Um, so that means we need to continue the hearing. Um, <clears throat> so moved. Um, and is the next meeting acceptable to the applicant? It is. Uh, that that would be the twenty sixth of September. So I assume that included that was included in your motion, Dan. Yes. Uh, motion to uh, continue the file. Uh, is it ten seventy? 250-1070 to the uh, uh, September 26th meeting. Uh, no, no, it is 250-1114. 1114. I'll uh, second that. All right, we have a motion made by Dan, seconded by Lisa for continuation of this hearing until September uh, 26th. Uh, so again, roll call vote starting with Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Carrie. Aye. And Mark and myself, I'll throw in an aye. And, aye. And Ron, I don't know if you got an aye in there, but I think you did. Yes, I did. Okay, good. Uh, all right, the motion carries. So uh, thank you guys. We'll, we'll see thank you, you next so much. Time. Have a good night. Thank you. You bet. Uh, our next uh, hearing is does not have a file number unless it came in today. Uh, it is zero King Philip Road uh, project um, for um, construction of a single family uh, dwelling with associated gravel access driveway utilities, etc. Uh, do we have a, a representative of the applicant? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Chris Lucas with Lucas Environmental, professional wetland scientist and registered professional soil scientist. Um, would it be acceptable if I share my screen so I can run through the plans? Yeah, I suspect you already have sharing right. capacity. Is that right, John? I do. Yes, thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, can everyone see this aerial? Uh, we can. Great, thank you. Um, we're here tonight for a single family home project at Zero King Philip Road. Uh, it's map 19, parcel 142. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Lindsay Street LLC, 
uh, Mr. Tim Infanti is on the call uh, with us this evening, as well as Larry Tilton from Tilton and Associates and uh, Elliot Brace, a project attorney. Um, MassDP, as of the start of the hearing, had not issued a file number. We reached out to them today, but uh, we have not heard back, so a file number has not been issued. Um, the project site is located just south of King Philip Road and south of Wenatcunnet Pond to the north. Um, their residential properties to the northwest and east and to the south of our parcel is primarily wooded areas, as you can see in the aerial. Um, just, just the point so the commission's aware, this lot is a pre-existing non-conforming lot. It was formed in 1961 prior to the inception of the Wetland Protection Act and also prior to the creation of the 2001 25 foot no disturbance zone uh, with the town of Norton. Um, so this, this lot is constrained pretty significantly by wetland resource areas and the floodplain. Um, the applicant has received zoning board approval with no appeals on this project. So this has gone before them and been approved. Um, we're here tonight seeking a review and approval for the proposed project. This is the revised plan that was submitted September 8th uh, last week with the additional information requested by Mr. Thomas, which I'll get into. Uh, for the waiver, Just zoom in here. So on this plan, King Philip Road is to the north. Um, we, there are no, there's no rare species habitat on the site, no certified or potential vernal pools, no outstanding resource waters or mass DP wellhead protection areas. Uh, the site is located in the Canoe River ACEC, and it is located within a. The, the majority of the site is located within the 100 year floodplain. It is based on elevation 73, which is shown here in this yellow hatch line. Uh, so this entire portion of the site to the west of that line and north of it is the floodplain. Uh, we conducted a delineation of April of this year and flagged a bordering vegetated wetland located approximately here, which has been delineated all the way across the property. There is a drainage way conveying flows, um, looks like an intermittent flow through this portion into a 12 inch iron pipe, um, which appears to be currently clogged and that ties into a catch basin in King Philip Road. The proposed work consists of a single family residence uh, located towards the center of the site. Um, we also have a gravel driveway proposed along the edge of the property line. Uh, we have a small paved area here, which is less than 5,000 square feet immediately in front of a proposed garage um, attached to the structure. Uh, utilities consisting of sewer, water, and electric will run from King Philip Road through this vicinity and into the proposed structure. There's also a small deck proposed along the back of the property, as well as a 500 gallon propane tank and a proposed subsurface roof recharge system is located here. We've also proposed a filtrex sock running along the back of the property, the entire wetland edge, and to King Philip Road. So it'll completely protect the wetland resources on the site. Um, the work is proposed within the 100-foot buffer. Portions are proposed within a 25-foot no disturbance zone and the 100-foot buffer zone to the BVW, which encompasses the entire site. The building has been fitted with flood vents to allow floodwaters to pass through unobstructed. Grading has been redesigned around the building to provide compensatory storage. And the roof runoff will all be directed towards the system in the back. The project is Sorry, fully can complete. You, can you just zoom in? Sorry, it's really hard to see this. Can you just zoom in on the house itself? And sure. it's, you know, relative to the flood zone, it's just really hard to see. Thank you. There you go. Um, okay. So the, the project currently fully complies with the performance standards for bordering land subject to flooding. There's approximately 102 cubic feet of flood storage loss um, with the flood vents and the regrading. We have a total of 1,455 cubic feet net gain. Those numbers are provided on the plans by Tilton showing each increment foot by foot. So we do comply with that standard. Flood waters can pass unobstructed and therefore we do comply with all the standards. Um, Wildlife habitat evaluation is required for impacts greater than 5,000 square feet. Um, overall, the entire square footage of impact to the floodplain is just over 16,000 square feet. So we conducted a habitat evaluation on July 7th of this year, 
We submitted Appendix B along with a summary included in the notice of intent. The, the good habitat areas on the site are located to the back um, beyond our limit of work. This back portion of the site has several large oak trees with a significant diameter of breast height of 20 to 25 inches. Um, earlier design iterations had proposed work back here. Everything's been pushed towards the front of the site to avoid this area and preserve that habitat um, so that this will be the limit of work back here. Um, it's been minimized to the extent feasible um, to allow this construction and the work to propose here and a small lawn in the back. Otherwise, this will not be touched. Uh, the applicant is also proposing mitigation. Um, it's rough, it's just under 6,000 square feet, 5,800 square feet. Um, I'll zoom back in again in a moment. This is a little slow. Uh, this area here along the edge of the driveway towards the front and along the driveway to this location is proposed for a conservation wildflower mix um, to, to allow, uh, you know, small critters and other, you know, bugs and whatnot to use this area for you know for, for wildflowers and such this area up front is currently disturbed it's it's um, pretty much lawn so this will be restored to a meadow this includes a 25 foot no touch zone as well as this area um, that that will be impacted for construction of the driveway and restored upon completion this small area will be loaned and seeded for lawn along the adjacent to the house <coughs> so in addition to that the applicant's also proposing to clean out this pipe and uh, ensure that this flow is is moving adequately because it's very possible this blockage has been here for a long time and may have impacted the wetland and created a larger wetland than may have existed otherwise. Um, so there's, we want to be able to reestablish and make sure that this is flowing properly. Uh, at the request of Mr. Thomas, we did submit a waiver request for your 25 foot no disturbance zone. And per your policy, the commission may grant relief from portions of this zone if there are significant attempts made to meet the requirement and a clear showing that the requirement cannot be met. Um, you know, we, we, we flagged this back in April. We spent a long time trying to find a design that works for this commission. So it's, it's taken some time, uh, working with Till and the applicant, but they have looked at several iterations of this one option. And the, the best option would be to site the house up front, but it's just not viable. We just don't have enough room without directly impacting the wetlands to fit a house with driveway and such, um, up at the front of the property. And it's just too small an area. So our next option was to look at getting into the site and how we were going to do that. Um, and we've moved the access roadway as far to the east along the property line as we can. Um, it was originally proposed as um, per impervious surface. We've removed that and created gravel through this section to further reduce impact. We've avoided direct and indirect wetland impacts here with this. Um, so we don't have to cross the wetland to get to the other offland portions of the site. And, you know, looking at Tilton's evaluated different configurations of the house, and this this is the, the best option that fits in the site to avoid the back of the site, avoid wetland impacts, and um, propose a, um, a single family home on the property. Um, we are cognizant of the 25 foot zone, um, but with, the, with this legally and lawfully created lot, there's just no way to avoid this area and construct this home. Um, we've looked at options, it's, it's just not viable here to, to develop the home. And with that, I'll, I'll open it up to any questions the commission may have and the team's here to hopefully address whatever we can this evening. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. th this is uh, not directly related to um, uh, the Wetland Protection Act, but it's my understanding that if you have a, a propane tank like that, I assume it's connected to the house by an underground pipe um, and it has to be uh, a significant distance above the water table. And I'm presuming the water table is quite high at that site. So you may have to find another configuration for propane okay. service, but that's, that's off the, the topic. But um, so what you're saying is this does not fill wetland areas i mean uh, fill uh, floodplain areas this this construction well we're, we're we're there there is there is fill here we have um but but your net your net, net. Your, there's no net filling is that what you're saying 
there's a net gain. So we're creating storage area with the construction of this 1,455 cubic feet. And um, Tilton has evaluated that foot by foot. So between elevation 70.5 and 71, 71 to 72, and 72 to 73. And they've provided that on the plan. And, and the foundation of the house is actually above the floodplain? So they're, they're creating a subfloor here. Um, so floodwaters, they're putting flood vents in. So the flood, the first floor elevation, uh, the living space is one foot above flood stage as uh, per floodplain or FEMA requirements. Uh, floodwaters, it'll have flood vents. So floodwaters will be able to pass freely through the house. All right, uh, John, um, you have any comments? Um, yeah, I mean, I had I had a few. I mean, this is a very tough site, I think, to to um, you know to project here. I also it's un, it's my understanding that this project itself is in the wetland protection district, which is under the zoning requirements. So um, I don't know if the applicant has looked into that with the zoning bylaws for the Article Five. So I wanted to bring that to. I talked to Tom Liddy, who works with you, Chris, today. I don't know if you relayed that information to you, but um, you know, I just wanted to bring that attention to you as well as part of this project to look through that. I'll I'll defer to you, Larry, on that. I know they have zoning board approval, um, so I'll I don't know, Larry, if if you or Elliot can address the the zoning requirement there. Um, but again, that's that's not a wetland protection issue. But Great. we'll have to defer to Attorney Cruz. Hi, this is Elliot Bray on behalf of Mr. Infante. I, I would need some time to look into that. I know we went to the zoning board. I'm sure the board is aware that uh, the decision was reached June 22nd. It was recorded on August 4th, 2022. I'm not specifically aware of the Article 5 you're look, uh, talking about, but I'd be happy to research that. Yeah, I, I would just look at that as part of this. I mean, obviously, there's no number for this project. Uh, as of as of today so i don't anticipate any sort of closure tonight um but i would just have your team look at that information and and digest it okay. as part of this the, uh, yes sir tank. Yeah. yeah so is this concrete pan, pan is this project being developed for the home the property owner or is this a developer uh, the, the the current owner uh, has an arrangement with the Lindsay Street LLC uh, to purchase the property. Um, so it sounds like a developer. Uh, you're right, correct. I, I mean, uh, this kind of property has problems written all over it, and and I I, I don't know if, if if I were a developer, I would consider this a really high risk thing considering what weather does when water goes through the foundation of a house but um particularly in the winter time um but I, I, you know that's that's obviously not part of the wetlands protection act but it is part of what is this development going to be worth after it's done um any questions among commission members can we address the gas, the fuel? Uh, I do have one. If you can zoom in to the back of the house, please. <clears throat> so you mentioned that, you know, towards the rear of the house, we get a little more um, wildlife habitat value. So what is the distance there that you're giving them for a backyard? That's area one, I think it's called. Right. It's the, the this, this area between the back of the house and the limit of work is 50 feet. Um, that's giving them room to construct the house, install the subsurface system, um, and provide some land. So it's it's been cited to avoid the large diameter trees on the property, which are located further back. So I think in the in the past situations when we have a sensitive area, we would ask that you put something. I actually should say sediment control barrier, not not erosion, but um, probably put something along that line in place of that sediment control barrier when it comes out. At the completion of construction to make sure that there's no encroachment further than what we're allowing 
would uh, would would something like um, signage or something every fifty feet or so? Would that be no, appropriate? The signage doesn't work because people move the signs. We've had that happen. So perhaps a split rail fence, a post and rail fence, something to that effect. People have physically moved signs. My somebody did it across the river here, and every year they move a few feet. <laughs> We can uh, we we can discuss that and get back to you for the next hearing on that. So you're looking for this area, this line right here, correct? Have something here, right? Because we don't want them to encroach past that line, that limit. Once we approve this, um, I would um, we we can look into other options. I, I I would say with split rail fence, it's uh, you know, if if you put the posts in the 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 two split rails are pretty. I I think they're easier to remove than a, a, a cemented in sign, but um you know because they're, they're pretty easy to pop out but because i've seen that on conservation areas we've seen uh some homeowners they'll pop the rails out and dump things and we've had to rectify that on projects we've been involved in where uh you know after a project the developer goes in they build a multiple lot subdivision and the split rails disappear um not to say signage can't disappear either but if Right. So I would ask you to, to come up with something and maybe put the discs that says, in, you know, environmentally sensitive area, no touch zone or, or whatever past that line. So we've done that on a lot of projects in town. I, I will also say that with the split rail fence, there was a certificate of compliance that was requested recently uh, for another project and they actually removed them. And I requested that they replace them uh, because that was the in, in initial intent that was there so they had to spend more money to replace the the fences that they took out so you know so maybe I we think, have to come up with something a little more heavy duty and sturdier than a split rail fence i mean I, I i would be positioned for for this kind of project that you know obviously it's a very sensitive area um that you know there would be something that's more permanent at this location for this project well we'll, we'll look into options for um something we'll, we'll discuss it and present it for probably the next area. Okay, thank you. I believe, uh, I, I believe Mr. Tilton would like to discuss, I know the chairman raised the question about the the propane tank. Larry, do you like to discuss that? This is Larry Tilton, Tilton and Associates. The question was raised about the propane tank to be in a buried tank. I did the soils out there in the groundwater. It's significantly deep. It's somewhere around six to seven feet down. So I don't anticipate that tank sitting in the water. And I believe it's sitting on a concrete pad anyway. And so it, it'll be strapped for buoyancy reasons. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't, ex even though it would be natural to assume that it, there was a high groundwater table, it is not. In fact, the soils over there are very, very good. They're sandy, very sandy. So, um, right. That said, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean this. This would be between the owner and the propane company. Yeah. But uh, they, they and it's not the tank I was referring to. It's the the line connecting the tank to the house, uh, which will be in the ground. And uh, so they're they're a little bit persnippity about exactly uh, yeah. what the, what the water table uh does but i mean it's not a conservation issue and uh they can put individual tanks against the house if uh that don't have a, a line that has to go anywhere but directly into the house so you just may have that issue to deal with i'm sure that with the impervious barrier that we put along around the line for the call up will be sufficient to, to, but you're right the, the gas company and the contractor will need to address that issue uh, any other questions or comments, either from the commission? Yeah, it's plumbing. Yeah. Just a quick question, Chris. I'm wondering if you can clarify the uh, spot by the road that you've got labeled as a restoration area. This project doesn't um, involve any disturbance of wetlands, wetland resource areas, right? So that's not compensatory. That's just, as you described earlier, <coughs> transitioning a grass area to a, a wetland meadow. Is that correct? Or Right. So, yeah, th there's no direct or indirect wetland impacts here. Um, we're just working in the floodplain. Um, this area is currently disturbed and didn't doesn't provide much value now. So, um, you know, the applicants trying to work with the commission here, knowing this is a very constrained lot. So we decided that this whole front area up front could be restored to a wildlife meadow. Um, 
And that also enhances the 25 foot of the wetland as well as the area along the driveway here. Uh, we, we felt that we, you know, it, we looked at options to avoid the impact here. Um, unfortunately, it's needed to be able to construct a driveway. So this will be restored when we're done down to this point here. Um, and then this will be loamed and seeded for along and adjacent to the driveway and landscaped and such. So um, we, we felt that this was a good opportunity to provide something um, and, and provide a little bit of a buffer to the wetland um, due to the constraints on the site. Great, thank you. Any other questions, either from the commission or members of the audience? So we do not have a, um, a number yet. So we will need to uh, continue and our next meeting is, uh, next meeting is. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is this a, a question coming from what's labeled as Galaxy Tablet? Uh, please Bob identify Brady. yourself and, and your address. I'm Barbara Brady at 82 King Philip Road, and I am an abutter. I had sent you a letter with pictures, and I'd like to explain about the brook. I don't know if anyone is aware of the brook. But years back, we had a beautiful flowing brook from the lake, crystal clear water with fish swimming downstream, somewhat like a herring run. And um, at some point, Mr. Coolis had filled it in with everything, including the kitchen sink. Uh, then he uh, dropped his shed on the top of it. So I've attached the photos to show you the shed. And then I also have pictures of the water. Um, when we have a lot of rain, it's like a flood zone where the brook used to be. And unfortunately, the brook, you know, dried up after he filled it up. And the fish died, unfortunately. And um, it's a shame that we can't get the brook back into flowing water. Um, the new people that are working on the house have put like pea stone over it, but they have the equipment to dig it up and take out all the toxic uh, stuff that was thrown in there years back. And uh, maybe that would help the uh, road situation because at some point we may have a sinkhole there. Um, I have a letter explaining about how the piping perhaps had collapsed underneath the road also. And um, that's one thing I wanted to discuss. Another thing like the driveway I'm concerned about, which would go to my neighbor's yard, Mr. Lawrence. I had assumed that um, it was like so many feet from his line. And it appears that the driveway is right on his line, which means it would go like under um, the sun deck and right in his front yard is where the driveway is going which to me is not good at all. And then um, I had a question, like I'm saying 25 years ago, I went before it, I don't know if it was the zoning or the conservation, I can't remember, because I wanted to um, have my daughter build a house on our property. And um, they told me, don't even waste your time, don't even bother to fill out the paperwork, you don't have enough frontage. Well, I have two and a half acres of land, which is excellent. It's all high. I have 130 foot frontage. So obviously, you know, the average homeowner like myself who has no money to have a builder with money and connections, um, they're able to build on wetlands, having a driveway passed by the zoning committee, which I couldn't understand on the abutters line. And I thought it had to be like 13 or 15 feet away. And then um, the frontage, there's certainly not enough frontage and it's in wetlands. So I'm a little confused at how, you know, you justify this being on the conservation. And um, I just feel that there's something wrong with this picture. So those are my concerns for status along with the letter that I sent you. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. John Thomas, can you share the pictures? Do we have those? Um, <clears throat> so, 
So my first question would be to Chris, is you're labeling it as a drainage way, but what, how does it qualify under the act if it does? Is um, it an it, intermittent stream? Is it a ditch? Did some, is it man-made? Um, we, we do, it's, it's pretty linear. We do believe it was altered at some time. Um, it's difficult to know when it may have occurred before the regulations were created. So, um, we're not touching it. We, at, we're working in the buffer. We know that, um, I, I will say that the, the, the drainage does flow towards the pond, not away from it. And it flows into a catch basin. So if there was an alteration then the town did something in the past, because this thing goes into a, a you know, the, the drainage system in the roadway. So, um, you know, I, I can't really speak to the history of how this thing formed, but yes, it's it's a bordering vegetated wetland bordering on that intermittent swale. Um, well, it's you know, an intermittent, no, you got to get the nomenclature correct. Is it intermittent swale or is it a stream under the act? So I'm trying to figure out if it, if it is jurisdictional. No, is that drainage way jurisdictional? It, it, or whatever you're calling it. It, it probably, it could be considered jurisdictional. Um, but, but again, it doesn't change anything that's before the commission because we are looking at, well, the, it matters that somebody filled it, sir. You know, I mean, if it was just a ditch, well, that's one well, thing, but it, the fact that somebody may have altered it is, is different if it's, if it qualifies as a resource area. So un I just understood, want to get that but it, no, I, I understand record. that. Um, but the, for, yeah. for, for, for the commission to act on unauthorized fill, the commission has has to prove fill occurred. We have no evidence of that to this time that someone filled it. And, you know, we, was it filled in 1960, 1970, 1980? Um, I, I don't know. So, you know, if, if there wasn't authorized fill here, we, we, we can review the materials that the abutter submitted. If Mr. Thomas can share that with us after the hearing and we could take a look at it, but yeah, so, I, I, apologize. I apologize. I don't think I have it digitally right now. I think I, I, I'm looking for it in my email, um, okay. but I did make a scan of it. I think it's on our server at the office. I can definitely share that for the next meeting. Uh, most certainly, okay. I can definitely do that. But So uh, does it look like it was disturbed, John? Or um, I mean, to be honest with you, that whole entire area looks like it's been disturbed. I mean, there's lots of remnants of um, uh, culverts and, and, and the like and, and things of that nature. Um, I can definitely go back out there and take some more photographs to get a, a general sense as to what that area looks like in more detail. Uh, but based mm -hmm. on my observations, I mean, it definitely looks like there was some preliminary disturbance, you know, prior to the uh, applicant coming in. So, you know, I, I can't I can't attest as whether there was fill or not. I mean, <laughs> I, I'd have to look at historic aerials and I don't even know if we'd be able to find that finite details for that location because it's it's so narrow. Um, you know, it's not something extensive that we'd be able to really pick up on a on an aerial imagery. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm just so, trying to get to the point of whether or not it was jurisdictional. So, um, um, anyway, right, I understand. And, and yeah. what is the width of that lot? Uh, I'm sorry. What is the width of the lot of the lot? I mean, a, a and a butter brought up the the frontage on the road. What is that frontage? uh larry is this it is it 100 feet right here is that is that your yes. frontage 107 100.72 right and you know again this is this that's that's not a conservation commission issue and they have zoning board approval the zoning board will handle would handle that um you know we're happy to provide a copy of that if the commission wants it for the record no i i'm just i'm just puzzling over the choice to develop this lot I, I i mean it's if it requires a mortgage it, does a bank feel comfortable writing a mortgage on this kind of project uh, you know it's just <clears throat> you're right it's not conservation but well i'm actually gonna term, i'm actually gonna interrupt you on that because there is potential that it could be conservation because it's within the wetland protection district and it goes to planning board planning board makes a decision and if they need a special permit for the requirements for doing work within a wetland protection district then they require conservation a recommendation letter from conservation so what i'm getting at to the applicant is to look at article 5 of the zoning bylaws and review that for the next meeting and let us know what their opinion is on that I, I mean this this kind of building could have all kinds of 
difficulties associated with it, and it could wind up being something that nobody wants, uh, which technically is a, a town issue, but um, uh, not a conservation issue. But, uh, okay, so uh, I, unless there are further questions, um, we, we need to continue because uh, of the lack of a number, but also to address some of these questions. <clears throat> so um, the next meeting is acceptable, which is the 26th. I, yes, I, I do have a question just to clarify for the board, assuming Mass DEP has no comments, the, the, the commission is looking for um, some level of protection along the back erosion control or sediment control line, um, something more than signage, where to review the article five and provide an opinion prior to the next hearing. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at any historic activities to the extent we can provide anything. Um, is, is that the summary that we're looking for for the next hearing? I just want to make sure we're not, I'm not missing anything the commission would like to see. If I may, Elliot Bray again, we'd also, I have taken a look at Article 5, Mr. Thomas, and we will certainly address that. Thank uh, you very much. Appreciate it. And I, I think your list was complete. Anybody have anything else that might have been overlooked? Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. No, but I think we should at least um, maybe uh, let the, um, is it, was it Barbara, uh, know that any concern she has about zoning and setbacks, um, distances for the driveway to her neighbor's property line should um, visit the, um, the zoning board or the planning board. That's, that's not under our purview. I did that. I, I went to the zoning Right. Okay. So if they approve it, I mean, we, we have no say either way, whether they even approve it or deny it, because it has nothing to do with the Wetlands Protection Act. So it's it's out of our hands. Just wanted you to know that. All right. I think uh, if there are no further questions or comments, we can consider yep, we can a motion to continue. Could I ask a question? Uh, yeah, please identify yourself. Manuel Lawrence, 72 King Philip Road. I'm the other rebutter. Ever All right. since we've been working in the buffer zone, we've been losing three or four trees in the last four weeks that are 25 inches across. I've been there 35 years and not one of them has fell yet. Okay. It's it's all it's all wet there. I mean, does it take a scientist to figure that out? Well, the the exact delineation of where it's wet and where it's not has been done. And that's illustrated on the, on the plan. But working in the 25 foot buffer zone. That's what the plan illustrates. Yes. Thank you. So I think we're ready for a motion to continue till uh, September 26th. Moved. Uh, looks, second. Okay, it looks like the motion was made by Dan and seconded by Lisa for continuation of this hearing until September 26th. Roll call vote starting with Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Ron. Aye. And Mark. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. We'll see you next time. Great. Thank you. Appreciate your time this evening. You bet. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is file number 250-1070 concerning zero, Eddie, zero rear Eddy Street for WIDAC Share Corporation. Um, been continued multiple times and where do we stand? Do we have a, uh, a representative? It looks like Tim is here for that. Yes, good evening, everyone. Tim McGuire. I'm a wildlife biologist and wetland scientist with Goddard Consulting. I'm here on behalf of the owner and applicant Sure Corp LTD. I'm joined by Sam Wydak as well on tonight's call. So we understand that the list of continuances for this project um, certainly is getting a little on the long side. And we first want to start by saying we very much appreciate the commission's patience on this. Uh, we're here to provide an update on where we're at with everything. 
Um, we did submit some revised plans and stormwater report to the commission recently. Um, Mr. Chesia, the peer reviewer, is has provided some preliminary comments to us, which our stormwater team is actively working on. So we are making progress on the project. Um, we're pleased to be in a spot where we're now pushing it along. We understand that there are some additional comments from Mr. Chesia outstanding from a previous review that need to be addressed. Um, we're aware of that and are working towards um, getting that done. So we're happy to entertain any questions or concerns from the commission on the newly submitted um, materials, um, but it, it will be our intention to request an additional continuance to allow our stormwater team to address the final outstanding issues. Thank you. All right. Um, questions or comments? John, do you have anything to add? Uh, I've spoken to Mr. Chessia. I've spoken to Mr. Wydak uh, about the current uh, iterations. I think their team is understanding what needs to get done, and we're hopeful that those um, revisions can be made swiftly. That way they can hopefully have this project uh, more complete uh, for John Chessia to review and provide his final um, assessment. Uh, any questions from commission members? Yeah, John, uh, Thomas, so since so much time has passed, have, have the abutters, I mean, I know, you know, we've continued it so many times. Have we, have we thought about re-notifying -not abutters? Because I know that several of them showed up early on and then just kind of faded away. So what's, what's the thought on that? I mean, technically, we're supposed to allow, well the commission has the right to allow for this project to be on the agenda for up to two years and then they can make a decision as to whether the applicant needs to withdraw it or the yep. commission feels the need that they should just deny it because of incompleteness so those are kind of the current current options in front of the commission right now um i think the applicant and their representatives understand the um, timeliness of getting a complete application to the commission. I don't think any notifications are required unless they can't meet those uh, parameters. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, so uh, unless there are questions from the audience, um, we can consider a motion um, to continue. Now, uh, Tim, is um, September 26th, uh, does that, work for you uh, you're on you're on mute Tim sorry about that I was getting a little feedback from my end um, I see the um, the agenda states you have a meeting on October 24th is that correct well I was actually gonna bring that up because uh, there had been some discussion of of a meeting in on uh, October 11th but that may not have may not come to the past Um, in, in that case, I, I would I would request that we continue to October 24th. I think that'll give us ample time to have all of the stormwater comments addressed and have a revised set of plans before you. Okay. Uh, we can consider such a motion. So moved. Motion made by Dan and seconded by? Second. Second. Seconded by Ron. Uh, roll call vote beginning with Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Ron. Aye. Aye. And Mark. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. Motion carries. So we'll see you October uh, 24th. Great. Thank you so right. much. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, our next item is notice of intent, file number 250 1093 concerning 70 Oak Street. They are requesting a continuation until. September 26th. So moved. Motion made by Dan and seconded by? Second. I seconded by Ron. Um, again, roll call vote, beginning with Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Kerry. Aye. aye. And Mark. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye, so that motion carries. Um, and next item is file number 250-1108 concerning Zero Hill Street, notice of intent. Um, 
They they requested a continuance this morning. Okay, uh, I, I assume till till, uh, till the twenty sixth. Yes. Yeah. So All moved. Right. We have a motion made by Dan and seconded by. Second. Second. Seconded by Ron. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Carrie. Aye. All right. And Mark. Aye. And I'll throw in an eye. So that motion carries. Um, item D is uh, file number 250-1105, a notice of intent for Pine Street Cluster. They have requested continuation until September 26th. So moved. Motion made by Dan and seconded by? Second. Seconded by Ron. Uh, roll call vote starting with Dan and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Ron and Carrie. Aye. Aye. And Mark. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. Um, 56 Leonard Street, we had at the start of the meeting. And now um, file number 250 1109, notice of intent for Mansfield Avenue Senior Center at 120 116. Uh, do we have a representative of the applicant, or if they uh, looks like we do? Hello, everybody. Uh, Scott Lingren from BHB, uh, representing the town, uh, the applicant. Um, thank you for having us tonight. Um, I think the last time we uh, were in front of you, uh, we made a presentation uh, to the project, um, which is the senior center, the new senior center on Mansfield Ave. Um, at the time, uh, the project was undergoing a stormwater management review uh, with uh, through uh, the town's consultants, Armory Engineering. Um, we've since uh, made some responses back and forth with them concerning some changes to the plan documents and to the calculations. And uh, late uh, last, well, last week, we received a final letter from the Armory. Uh, the town did um, that all the changes that they requested were uh, acceptable and now met the guidelines and requirements um, that he was seeking for our stormwater management design so um, at this time if, if the board uh, wishes me to uh, address any more questions uh, from the board or the public uh, we are here myself and scott hobson uh bhb's wetland scientists are here to to answer any more that you might have. And uh, hopefully um, we can uh, have this meeting uh, closed and, and move on um, with your agenda. John Thomas. Yes. I mean, I looked through the peer review letter from Amory engineers and it appears based on my observations that the uh, peer review consultant ha uh, acknowledges that the applicant uh, on behalf of the town has addressed all the concerns uh, for the stormwater portion of the project. So unless there are questions and comments that bring up a new issue, it sounds like we will be in shape to close tonight. Is that your assessment? Yes. Uh, questions from members of the board? And questions from anyone in the audience? So not seeing any, uh, I think we can consider a motion to close the public hearing for file number 250-1109. So moved. Motion made by Ron and seconded by. Second. Seconded by Mark. Uh, again, roll call vote starting with Lisa and Ron. Aye. And uh, Carrie and Mark. Aye. Aye. And Dan. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. Uh, it is closed and we will generate an order of conditions within 21 days. Well, perfect. Thank you very much for your time tonight and um, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, our next item on the agenda is file number 
uh, 250-1112. It's an ANRAD at 0 South Washington Street. Um, and this was continued from 822. They requested another continuance on Friday. Now, did we so actually the, open the this? Did, 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 this, this? This was part of an application, but they've changed uh, consultants. So, so they... It never was brought actually before us in details. Is that correct? It was not brought in, in before us in detail, but they did notify about us. Okay. All right. So uh, requesting a continuance until September um, 26th. Yes. Yes. So moved. We have a motion made by Dan and seconded by. Second. Seconded by Ron. So roll call vote starting with uh, Lisa and Ron. Hi. Hi. And Carrie and Mark? Aye. Aye. And Dan? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. Um, that brings us to um, 162 West Main Street. And I think, uh, Lisa, I'm going to turn over the chair to you for this item. Okay, it looks like we have a request for, is it a partial, John, or is it a full COC? No, it's a full COC. Okay, can you please give us a status? Sure. So I met with the landowner out there, Mr. Pisa. One second. Let me just admit this person. Uh, and they have, um, to my knowledge, fulfilled their requirements for securing a COC. They are, have provided the plan as requested from them as part of the as-built to show the limits of the conservation restriction and the limits of the posts as being directed to them as part of the agreement and showing the distance of 40 feet as part of the agreement as well. Uh, I also have some photographs to show as well of the area to the commission. I just have to stop sharing this plan for a second. Mm -hmm. So here's the current conditions of some of the area. So it's it's very vegetated. Uh, the posts are in, and the vegetation is flourishing based on my observations. It meets the requirements as uh, required under the agreement. And it is my understanding that what the applicant has done for this meets not only the COC requirements, but also meets the uh, uh, requirements is listed in the agreement. Okay. Uh, do, do any commission members have any questions or comments? So, John, let me ask you this. So, do we have to take a vote? Obviously, we have to take a vote to issue a full COC, but um, is there anything we need to do on the agreement side from a legal perspective? So once we issue this COC, the applicant is required to move forward with the recording of a, a um, conservation restriction. And there is a deadline that they need to meet as part of the agreement. And they need to record that. And I have talked to Mr. Pisa about that. So he understands what's required of him. So okay. it, as, long as, as long as the commission votes to approve this COC, all the agreement, then it falls to the next set of the agreement. Okay, understood. So if there are no questions, I'll need a, um, a motion to issue a full COC for 162 West Main Street. So moved. Motion by Kerry. Second, anybody? Anybody? I'll second it. <laughs> Okay, uh, motion made by Carrie, second by Dan. Uh, roll call, uh, Ron. Aye. Carrie. Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. And I'll throw in nye, and Julian uh, abstains. Exactly. Okay. Back to Julian. Uh, yes, I think our next item on the agenda is um, 
a set an order of conditions for file number 250-1110, uh, which relates to 469 475 South Worcester Street. Um, do, we, do we have a plan? I, I just uh, can't recall the details of this. Um, I think I'm getting it confused with the North Worcester Street project, but that's kind of done. Got it. Let's see. Here it is. Can you all see this? Yeah. So is it, this was the um, project that had the shared driveway with 4475. Oh, yeah. All right. And they're they having the driveway off of this property um, using the existing driveway and then trying to do the project, which is mainly outside most of the jurisdiction of the CONCOM. All right. So um, it's really the driveway that, that was at issue then. The, the majority of this project is 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 the driveway, the approach to the house. Any questions, comments, revisions to the um, draft of the order? Pretty quiet out there, so I'm assuming people are okay with uh, the submitted draft. Yep. So Terry can... speaks for me, too. <laughs> okay, well, we can consider a motion to approve the draft as submitted. So moved. A motion made by Ron, seconded by? Second. Seconded by Carrie. Roll call vote beginning with Lisa and Ron. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Mark. Aye. Abstain. All right. And Dan? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. All right. Our next item uh, is a request for extension. Where Where is Wading River Estates? Oh, that's that's on. Um, no, I'm upside down. Why is that? <laughs> that's that's on um, North Worcester, is it? Yeah this this project is currently um, it's still active, but the um, it's my understanding that the applicant would like to request an extension for another year. So you know, on my understanding is that the applicant would need to request an extension. 30 days prior to it expiring but i guess they would like to uh extend it 365 days before expiring so well, actually it's less than that now because it was uh july 8 28th 2023 i believe is the expiration date on that i can double check hold on a second yeah it's just just a little wonky that they're doing it this early if they have another yeah. growing they might yeah. finish, but yeah, the, um, if, if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to be of the offices at Five Russell Drive in Southeast. And, uh, I may sorry, sorry you're question. really choppy. We can you're hardly hear you. Up. Yeah. Okay, so let me log off. Again. Okay. So, so he, I know he's. He's logged off, but I'm wondering if it has to do with financing. It may. And, you know, that's could be something that they have to work out. Yeah, I mean, have you been out there, John? I have not. Oh. I mean, typically we look to see how they're doing if they're if it's under construction. There, and there hasn't been any work out there. Oh, they haven't started. They haven't started any work out there. Oh, okay. All right. No, I think this is for, like Julian said, for financial purposes. Okay. I think they're trying to find a backer for the project. Okay. Got it. But I'm sure Brian Dunn could provide us a little bit more information.
So, Mr. Dunn, are you back? I'm going to try. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's yes. right here. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, funny point down with MBL. Oh, I think you got to keep we're... your head still. <laughs> Um, so we'll, we'll give you a, a yes or no question. Uh, is, is this requested because of the requirements of financing? Yes. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> All right. Like, I just want to yeah. make sure they have ample time to build out so they they need to have ample time. They want to know if they have they so they have ample time to build and construct this and then get a COC. That is correct. All right. All okay. right. Uh, so I think I, I'm fine with that. A, any other uh, questions or concerns uh, in, among commission members? So the date would be July 28th, 2024, for this extension. Okay. So we're only going to give a year extension on. Well, how 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 many years do you want from the extension? Well, if they're going to start construction probably next month, uh, you know, it, it might be a little uh, short. So, so do you, would you like a two year extension? If I, if, if the board so pleases, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that would be 2025, July, July 28th, 2025. Yes, please. We can consider okay. that as a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Lucy. Second. And I think uh, Ron got the second. So uh, roll call vote. Lisa and Ron. Aye. Aye. Gary and Mark. Aye. Aye. And Dan. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So uh, Mr. Dunn, you're all set. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. Mr. Yeah, Dunn, I would just I would also uh, notify whoever's going to be doing the work to notify the office before they do so. You got uh, that way. That way, I can check it out for the pre-construction requirements. All right, thank you. Right, I, I want to make sure we have a pre-construction meeting as well because we've got a lot of things to cover and water lines to loop and things like that. Oh, so, oh yes. All right, great. Well, I'm glad we're all on the same page. Thank you. We'll be in touch with your office, Mr. Dunn. All right, great. Thank you. Yes, bye bye now. All right, next item on the agenda is reviewing draft minutes, in this case from August 22nd. Um, everyone was present with the exception of Lisa, and um, who was working late, I bet. Um, no, it was my first day of my new job. I was, yes, oh, I was not close that and, day. And <laughs> it's not close. Uh, so, <laughs> No anxiety provoking adjustment there. Huh? Yep. Um, so, uh, any comments on the, the minutes? Uh, I have some. Uh, page three, I believe, about uh, 10 or 11 lines down, there's a sentence that begins Mark explains that the iron rod. A space just to locate the limit. Uh, probably you want a D in there. So it's the word is adjust rather than A just. Um, did I get the page right? I, I think it must be three. I never I never print out the first page. Yeah, it, it looks like a three. Um, and, and if I really want, well, if I, I, really, I don't know it, it. It makes sense to me. It, it says Mark explains the iron rods are just to locate the limit of what Natural Heritage has approved for clearing. So that makes sense the way it's written. So it should be not a j a j u s t. It should be a r e j u s t. Yeah, but isn't that what's written? Oh, okay. yeah, meaning no. for solely. Yeah, right? solely. Just yeah, for, solely yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it should be R. <laughs> just. Yeah. Not that I was there, but I'm guessing. So you must have a copy that's different, though, because our copy reads R just to locate. Really? It says it 
It's a space just. Mine Mark says a just too. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Well, I think you guys are in a different universe. <laughs> You know, you know, I will. I did tell Megan to give you all different meeting minutes, so that way you guys have all different comments coming back. All right, well, it does make things interesting. Just to make it interesting. Just to see who's going to comment. Yes. Um, uh, I really want to be persnickety, and I do. Uh, about seven lines below that, uh, right up against the left-hand margin, it says "foot of separation." It should probably say "feet." separation or the other version footses which i sometimes use <laughs> uh yes dan you are correct i'll have those changes made um page four now megan's not here to defend herself so just so you know she's having oh, zoom issues I, I, uh, oh well <laughs> she's coming she's coming in now you can tell her you can tell her to you you can tell her yourself uh, Megan, uh, Megan, I understand you haven't been here, and so I'm I'm on my 25th correction now. Um, <laughs> now this is uh, it's not um, page four, uh, about eight lines from the bottom. There's a sentence beginning mark that there are. Um, so we probably want to say Mark mentions. Um, no, wait, wait. Is this the line that reads Mark mentions that there is also a storm water mitigation system? Uh, no, this is Mark mentions that there are good infiltration rates. Not only it should say mentions. It's oh, not yeah. that big a deal. It's just a. Uh, Mark mentions. M make of it what you will. Oh, mentioned. Okay. All right. It's past tense. Now, uh, whatever page that is, two pages later, about five lines down, well, actually about four lines down, there's a sentence. Scott mentions that there is a small isolated wetland back from the reservoir the John Thomas who also seen. Now we we like John, but I don't know if we're ready yet to call him the John Thomas. So like he, he is the John Thomas. But he is the well in that case you should capitalize the T. Uh V with a capital T. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you quotation it next time too. I I don't I don't see this on my my copy. Julian, um, it's truly a different universe. Julian, get the pre-corrected copy. I I see that. <laughs> I, I'm, it's like, I I don't know. <laughs> um, there's one more, which is two pages after that. Uh, a letter D. And if you go down about four lines, uh, well, three lines, Craig mentions that the John Thomas uh, had flagged the existing resource area. It is mentioned that there is a stream coming from Martin Reservoir goes by the east and south portion of the property. So you probably just want to uh, that. Yeah, it's, okay. uh, it's also correct on my copy. So I don't know. Oh, Dan, okay. you, you, like I said, you were given you were given the rough copy so we could get comments from you. Okay. Oh, okay. You were joking. <laughs> no, I'm okay. dead serious. Sorry All right, sorry. I was like, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, sorry, Dan. I didn't uh, mean to make you do all that work for nothing. No, that's all right. It, uh, you know, it's our our species like annoyed at something and so it gave me something <laughs> I, I actually i wasn't annoyed i was uh... all right so um we can look at a um motion to approve 
as uh, I will make the motion to already approve. correct. All right. I so motion made by Dan, seconded by. Second. I was thinking by Ron. Uh, I think uh, Lisa, you're probably going to throw in an abstention. Abstain, and, yes. And uh, then Ron and Carrie. Aye. Aye. And Mark and Dan. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. And uh, so we're at the new and old business. Um, what say you, John Thomas? What say me is that I found out about the wetland protection district overlay. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what's new. And that's is, kind is, of. With regard to the, our recent. Recent discovery with the Zero King Phillip project. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to the commission about because I guess it's been in since 1974. Um, but I just don't know kind of what what has been done about the wetland protection district. So, um, you know, I've talked over with the assistant to the planning board to address this to the planning board and bring it to their attention that there is a wetland protection district and that they should be, um, you know, knowledgeable of kind of what would trigger certain land use development requirements within that district and what would be needed for them because part of it is that if the special permit is required they require a recommendation letter from the conservation commission and we have to provide that to them uh, as part of the zoning bylaws so those are that's a requirement um, so just to keep the commission apprised of that as that may come up more often and more frequently uh, because the map that i looked at there's a lot of wetland protection district area in the town of Norton. So I'm just keeping the commission informed. Um, you know, obviously this project that was in front of us tonight, you know, that triggered it. Uh, so there'll probably be more that come in front of us as part of this. So, you know, it's up to the planning board to make those calls and those judgment calls. It's not our purview, but they do rely on us to provide advisement to them as to the certain activities that are occurring within the wetland protection district john that's john. always going to be triggered by the zoning board is that correct so they would see see it fit that they need our consultation they would push it to us for consultation but anything they've already approved there's nothing they you know it's assumed that they would approve this with, with that in mind is that right it's my understanding that all decisions made by the town are to review the current zoning bylaws and administer their um, responses and their their variances and things of that nature to um, you know in accordance with what the bylaws state so you know i can't really ag advise other town officials on how they should go about their business but i'm just saying that you know this is one of the projects that would probably be um something that they should look at the applicant's responsible to do that so it's the applicants the onus is on the applicant to present the information to the town and is it so zoning or planning? yeah that has to so so here's here's where it becomes interesting is that planning is the one that would um have to make a decision on it right because they would issue the special permit yes so and and this project went before the zoning board of appeals not correct not they did not go in front of planning so that's the direction that i was giving the applicant this evening was to advise the planning board and talk to the planning board on what direction to go for this okay so john is there criteria oh yeah there's if you go onto the website or i'll, I'll send over the article five so the commission is more apprised of it i mean it's not our jurisdiction it's in our purview yeah. but you know obviously there is a snippet on it that requires our input um you know so it would potentially fall to us if certain conditions were met yeah so so but john so let's assume this was th these lines were drawn in 1974. is it is the is the I, it's based on like me it's based on mean sea level so that's how it works so it's based on c contours and topography so if if their project is within this certain contours then they would be the projects applicable 
So my my point to this is uh, somebody should be revisiting this oh, in, yeah. in light of you know advanced uh, topographic capabilities since 1974. Does it does it even make sense? Are there areas in it now that are fully built out that should be pulled out of it? I mean, whose I, responsibility I, is it to assess this district? So I think the onus is on the planning board because it's their jurisdiction. So that's what I'm going to have a discussion with um, the planning board assistant um, and hopefully discuss this with the chair in more detail as to what best course of action the town would have to kind of administer this on a day-to-day -day kind of operational yeah. procedure. Because and like you said, the, yeah, tie it to a policy that we might have or something as well, or we have, maybe have to create a policy if there's any you know so i mean that's that's something to discuss i think you know obviously yeah. any sort of internal policy you know addendum or, or anything that we want to talk about um mm -hmm. but you know it's my understanding that the wetland protection district although it says wetland protection district it's an overlay district that's administered by the planning board so they have the complete authority and they rely right. on the board of health agent I mean, the Board of Health Board and also the Board of the Conservation Commission for recommendation letters. Okay. But I should think we have the first and foremost have the most knowledge on why those wetlands are in, what's the value, and maybe right. we can update that map with right. them. I, I yeah. think, you know, and that's, that's kind of what I was thinking was to kind of have a better sense as to yep. talking to the assessors and talking to, um, you know, where whatever data we can get for contours in town and try to I identify and isolate kind of these different mean sea levels because you know mean sea level you know there's there's definitely some some sort of um you know differentiation in the elevation that you can figure out whether it's navd 88 or ngv yeah the datum yeah, yeah. exactly so you know we'll definitely have to figure out kind of how we want to use that whether we want to base it on what fema says you know, because they use NAVD 88, I believe, to my knowledge. Um, so we'll have to just see if we want to correlate that to the FEMA maps and what they use and then have those floodplains put on us as well. Yeah, because 29 is, I mean, obviously, if it was 1974, it was pre-88. And 29, it, the elevation is actually higher than 88. 88 is lower. Is it? I thought it was the other yeah. way around. Okay. No, I think older, the older, it, I always get this confused, but I have to ask how we, but yeah. <laughs> I think the older one is higher. Yeah, I'll rely. I'll rely on you, Lisa. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's something we should definitely um, update. It's time. Yeah, yeah, I think the the last map that was generated was back in 1974, and I think since then they had 29 areas in town, or I think it was 26, and now they added four new ones. I think there were a couple duplicates in between too, as well. So. Oh, so they've been adding over the yeah. years mm -hmm. oh. i don't know okay. when the last time they added a couple areas but it may it may be in the planning board's best interest to kind of put this on their to-do list yeah and you know i'm going to talk to the chair on how we can go about doing this obviously we don't have a planning director yet but um you know it's definitely something that i think it's in the best interest of from conservation perspective to you know adhere to kind of what the purpose of this wetland protection district was when they when they administered it back in the 70s i think it's still something that we should try to uphold here in town um i don't want to you know start going back you know and doing enforcement for work that's already been you know issued but i i think that you know moving forward uh, clean slate kind of approach and just kind of try to make sure that we do the right thing with, with what projects that are in the wetland protection district. Mm -hmm. But that's really what I wanted to report to the commission this evening. I found about, out about this about maybe a week, week and a half ago. And, uh, you know, I've been just trying to understand it better. Okay. But that's all. That's all I have. I mean, I just think that the next thing on the agenda was to figure out the meeting on the 11th and then the 24th for uh, October. So, yeah, so it, it's not on our list of upcoming meetings, but um, do, you, do you think we will that will happen or not? I can definitely make it happen. I mean, if the commission wants to do that, we can definitely make another meeting on the 11th because the 17th is town meeting. 
Right. Well, the only concern was if the, the space between or the time interval between uh, 926 and 1024 is beyond the 21 day time frame. So, that's the only that's the only downside if we issue anything. Yes. So, you know, and on top of that, if somebody plops an application down, it's supposed to be heard within the 21 days. Um, so, you know, and, and the other issue is the length of the meetings if we don't have a, a meeting for that kind of interval. So right. last time we talked about it and people were inclined favorably. So I assume that's, that's still the case. I think we just hadn't decided on whether October 24th would also work for everybody. Cause that, I mean, it's still a Monday, I believe, but yeah. it hadn't been scheduled. But I thought October 24th was a, the original scheduled. No, meeting. we had it as the 17th and then we had to change it because of town meeting. And then it came up that you didn't want it to wait that long because of the 21 right. days. So we'll decide on it next time as to whether the 11th, which I believe is a Tuesday, uh, would be a substitute meeting date. Is there any reason we wouldn't do the 11th and the 24th? Well, yes, that's that's what I mean. Uh, that, okay. that our, our normal two meetings in the course of a month, and it satisfies the yep. not having more than 21 days between meetings. I mean, most applicants are going to give us the nod and not, not hold our feet to the fire. So, so, you know, maybe we're overdoing it. So I'm I'm open to either either approach, whatever. And maybe John, you can advise next time if if the number of um, uh, applications and um, COCs is workable. Yeah, I know we have a couple projects lined up for the 26th, uh, but as of right now, I don't foresee. I I can't really give you an idea what's going to come in. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, I guess then till the 26th and uh, Megan, just be advised. I'm going to be uh, away from the 15th to the 25th. So I won't be available for signing anything during that. Okay. Interview. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Are we looking for an adjournment motion? Uh, so moved. All right. So see you guys next time. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.